Semiconductors are the invisible foundation of the modern digital world. They power everything from smartphones, household appliances, electric vehicles, satellites, defense systems to advanced artificial intelligence. If semiconductors were to vanish tomorrow, then you and I would probably feel like we are living in the stone age. Now the interesting part is that until five years ago, India was nowhere to be found in the global semiconductor supply chain. Countries like US, China, Taiwan, Netherlands were so far ahead in the semiconductor race that India's possibility of making entry into the global semiconductor supply chain felt too late to happen. But surprisingly, after the launch of India Semiconductor Mission in December 2021 by Ashwini Vaishnav, things have taken a U-turn. In today's video, we are going to do an in-depth analysis of the semiconductor industry in India with the objective to decipher what exactly are semiconductors, how is the supply chain of semiconductors structured globally, what part of the value chain is India positioning itself, how Gujarat is becoming an important semiconductor cluster, and lastly, which Indian companies are making a significant stride in this space to take the semiconductor industry's market size in India to a whopping $100 billion by 2030. So without any further ado, let's get started. Imagine there's a reservoir that is used to supply water to three villages A, B and C. The time at which water is supplied differs for each village. Village A gets water at 7 am, village B at 9 am and village C at 11 am. The water is supplied through a network of pipes and to stop the flow of water during other times of the day or to control the supply of water to different villages at different times, there are walls put in between to stop the flow when required. In the similar way, semiconductors are like those pipes where smart walls are installed to control the flow of electricity. These smart walls are nothing but switches also referred to as transistors. Now instead of the huge infrastructure in case of water supply to villages, the controlled flow and blockage of electricity within semiconductors happens on a microscopic scale. For instance, the most advanced chips right now are the size of 2 nanometers, roughly 1 by 40,000 the thickness of a hair strand. This is why semiconductors are one of the most complex things that humans manufacture because they aren't even visible to the naked eye. In just your smartphone alone, there are billions of transistors to perform calculations and store information. Frankly, you wouldn't be wrong to call semiconductors the most critical technology of the 21st century. You would be surprised to know that manufacturing a single chip can involve a contribution by over 25 countries, a travel of over 25,000 miles and the sourcing and usage of over 300 critical minerals before the chip finally reaches your device. There is a high specialization spread across continents along with high barriers to entry due to significant R&D investment costs, large capex and volatile demand. If you were to look at the fragments of the global semiconductor supply chain, then it can be categorized into three main stages. The first stage is design, wherein companies like Nvidia, AMD and Qualcomm create blueprints for chips using special software tools and core designs that is intellectual properties from companies like ARM, Cadence and Synopsys. These design companies do not manufacture the chips, they only design it. The manufacturing part happens in the second stage. In the second stage, that is front-end manufacturing or fabrication, the designs are converted into physical chips on silicon wafers in ultra-clean factories called fabs. In terms of chip size, close to 70% of the advanced 16 nanometer and smaller chips are manufactured by TSMC in Taiwan and close to 70% of the 28 nanometer and larger chips are manufactured by China and Taiwan collectively. With a global semiconductor manufacturing share of 17.9%, South Korea is the third largest manufacturer of semiconductors after Taiwan and China. The major players in South Korea are Samsung and SK Hynix. Now the manufacturing of semiconductors requires special equipment and tools for different processes. For example, US-based companies like Applied Materials, KLA and LAM Research make machines that perform ultra-precise processes such as etch, deposition, diffusion and planarization. Furthermore, Netherlands-based ASML is the only company in the world that makes EUV lithography machines that are used to carve nanometer scale circuits on silicon wafers. Just so you know, the cost of one EUV lithography machine can go over $350 million, which makes it the most expensive machine 
in the world. This machine has over 1 lakh parts which makes it near impossible to replicate. Last but not the least, the third phase is assembly and testing. After the chips are made, they are cut, packaged and tested by companies like JCET in China and ASE in Taiwan. Under the third stage, there are ATMP companies that do semiconductor assembly, testing, marking and packaging. OSAT firms fall under the ATMP purview and they provide services to third parties on an outsourced basis. The global market size of OSAT alone was valued at $48.1 billion in 2024 and is projected to grow to $114 billion by 2034. The machines that are used in this stage for processes like cutting, packaging and testing the chips are manufactured by companies like Dell and Advantest. Once the OSAT companies are done with the testing of the chips, they are ready to be used for the following applications. Now before I tell you which stage is India positioning itself to become a trusted partner in the global semiconductor supply chain, take a few seconds to like the video and hit that subscribe button as your support will enable us to increase the frequency and quality of content on this channel. So coming back to the topic, India is positioning itself across the entire semiconductor value chain but it has a clear near-term focus and a roadmap to move up the ladder. At the moment, the immediate and strongest focus is on OSAT, that is outsourced semiconductor assembly and testing, which falls under the third stage, that is ATMP. A rapid development has been happening in this space, all thanks to Mr. Ashwini Vashnav, who launched the India Semiconductor Mission in December 2021 with an investment outlay of 76,000 crores. The vision of this mission is to build a semiconductor ecosystem that would enable India's emergence as a global hub for electronics manufacturing and design. This initiative will help India achieve five things. Formulate a comprehensive long-term strategy for developing semiconductors and display manufacturing facilities. Facilitate a secure supply chain for India's semiconductor industry, including raw materials, specialty chemicals, gases and manufacturing equipment, enable early stage startups for multifold growth in semiconductor design capabilities by providing requisite EDA tools that is the software for designing integrated circuits and printed circuit boards, generate indigenous intellectual property by encouraging Indian companies to create and patent new semiconductor technologies, processes and designs within India and even incentivizing transfer of technologies which involves acquiring and assimilating cutting-edge semiconductor manufacturing and design technologies from global players to bridge domestic capability gaps. And lastly, help Indian companies collaborate and partner with national and international agencies, industries and institutions so as to facilitate collaborative research, commercialization of technology and skill development in India. At the moment, 10 semiconductor projects worth over 1.6 lakh crore have been approved under India's semiconductor mission across six states. The major investment is, however, happening in Sanand and Dholera in Gujarat, where players like Micron, Tata Electronics, CG Power, and Keynes Technology are making significant investments. Other than these, six projects have been approved in five other states. Clearly, 77.9% of the investments are being done in Gujarat, which makes it one of the most important clusters for India's semiconductor industry. The whole reason for this is that Gujarat was the first state in India that came up with a dedicated semiconductor policy, which involved offering capital assistance on top of the central government's 50% support, land subsidies, reimbursement on stamp duty, and registration fees, subsidized electricity, and dedicated semiconductor parks in Dholera and Sanan. Now, nine of the total 10 projects that are approved under India's semiconductor mission are OSAT focused. Only Tata Electronics project in Dholera, Gujarat focuses on the second stage that is front-end manufacturing and fabrication. For this project, Tata Electronics has joined hands with PSMC Taiwan as the technology partner. Now, these investments are going to generate close to 80,000 jobs in India's semiconductor industry and the talent required for these jobs need to be specialized in design as well as manufacturing processes. Fortunately, 20% of the world's semiconductor design engineers are Indian and major global chip companies such as Intel, Qualcomm, AMD and Nvidia already have large R&D centers in India. Furthermore, under the government's Chip to Startup program, over 100 academic institutions in India are receiving chip design softwares like Siemens EDA, Synopsys and Cadence. These softwares are the ones which are used by top chip design companies globally. 
This initiative of equipping colleges with EDA tools at subsidized prices will make the upcoming talent pool industry ready. The program aims to train 85,000 people in VLSI and embedded system design over five years. There are five companies on which I want to shed a light on. And the fifth company is where I've personally invested in with an investment horizon of seven to 10 years. So the first company is Mosship Technologies Limited, which is a semiconductor and system design services company headquartered in Hyderabad. It is India's first listed fabless semiconductor company and is specifically involved in four things. The first is ASIC, that is application specific integrated circuit, which are basically custom design chips created for a specific application in automotive, consumer electronics or industrial equipment to maximize efficiency and performance for targeted tasks. The second is SOC design services or system on chip design, which are complex chips that integrate multiple components such as CPU, memory, input output ports, etc. onto a single chip often used in smartphones, tablets and modern electronics. Thirdly, they offer IP or intellectual property design services, which basically involves predefined blocks or modules such as USB controllers, Wi-Fi modules, etc. that can be reused across chip designs to speed up development and reduce costs. And lastly, they offer IoT or Internet of Things design services, which focuses on designing chips and modules in IoT devices such as smart home systems, industrial monitoring, and healthcare wearables. Mosschip has partnerships and alliances with players like Renesas, AMD, Microchip, and TSMC, which makes it a valuable semiconductor design company in India. From a financial standpoint as well, it is growing rapidly. The company posted a 59% growth in revenue, with EBITDA up 66% and net profit up by 239% year on year. It has also repaid all long-term debt, which highlights strong financial discipline. The second company in the list is CG Power and Industrial Solutions Limited. Recently, CG Power has ventured into semiconductor value chain by focusing on OSAT, that is outsourced semiconductor assembly and testing. They've done strategic partnerships with Renesas and Stars Microelectronics to get technology access in the semiconductor domain. On 3rd November, Ashwini Vashnav announced that semiconductor production at a manufacturing facility operated by CG Power in Sanand, Gujarat has been initiated and in total, the company plans to do an investment outlay of 7,584 crores on this project. The main focus will be on producing advanced semiconductor packages for sectors such as IoT, industrial, 5G, and electric vehicles. Their target customers will be fabless semiconductor design companies and integrated device manufacturers in Europe and US to package their chips at its Sanan facility. CG Power has also acquired the radio frequency and chip design company Axero from its Japanese partner Renesas and is already generating revenue. Since CG Power is an established business, the cash flow generated from its power systems and industrial systems business can be used for growing the semiconductor assembly, testing and packaging vertical. Overall, the financials of the company are quite unpredictable, largely owing to fluctuating demand for its products. But in the coming four to five years, CG Power will generate a significant revenue from their OSAT facility. The third company in the list is ASM Technologies Limited, which specializes in DLM or design-led manufacturing. This basically involves supporting the end-to-end -end product life cycle from conceptualizing a design to precision manufacturing that is bringing the design into the physical world. Its key business verticals include semiconductors, electronic equipment, and transportation, including automotives and aerospace. It is involved in providing semiconductor solutions, including design and development for equipment used in front-end as well as back-end processes like PVD, CVD, RTP, H, CMP, and inspection tools. It has a global presence with delivery centers in India, US, UK, Singapore, Canada, Japan, Thailand, and Mexico. ASM Technologies had recently signed an MOU with the government of Karnataka to invest 510 crores to expand ESDM, that is electronic system design and manufacturing related to DLM and precise engineering capabilities that are critical for semiconductor and electronic sector. Likewise, it has also signed an MOU with the government of Tamil Nadu to invest 250 crores to expand its design-led manufacturing capabilities in the semiconductor space. The company has a JV with HHV Group called ASM HHV Engineering Private Limited, which is focused on semiconductor-related systems 
and subsystems manufacturing. It has established India's first semiconductor focused equipment manufacturing facility. From a financial standpoint, the company has shown improved revenues and profitability from March 2025 quarter onwards and its debt to equity is 0.52 which is quite okay for a company operating in a high capex industry. It can definitely make a good differentiation in India by becoming a reliable supplier for advanced tools and equipment essential for the manufacturing of semiconductors. But for that to happen quickly, a partnership with an international equipment manufacturer to bring in technology know-how and help build domestic capabilities would be of essence. The fourth company in the list is Deepak Nitrite Limited, which is a chemicals company in India focused on manufacturing basic intermediates, phenolics and specialty chemicals. It is a key supplier of high priority chemicals used in semiconductor wafer fabrication including etching and cleaning chemicals which are critical for semiconductor manufacturing processes. It is actively investing to expand its specialty chemicals portfolio in concurrence to India's goal of achieving self-reliance in the domestic semiconductor industry. While semiconductor related chemicals form a small portion of its revenue, it can definitely grow in coming years as more firms start manufacturing semiconductor wafers domestically and globally as well. I think its strategic location of manufacturing semiconductor focused chemicals in Dahej and Nandesari will be of essence as Gujarat slowly paces towards becoming the Silicon Valley for semiconductors in India. From a financial standpoint, Deepak Nitrate is a fundamentally strong company and at the moment it has corrected by close to 44% from its peak because of reduced margins in international markets, all thanks to increased supply of agrochemicals by China. The market size of semiconductor chemicals is quite small, but due to Deepak Nitrite's strategic location, it can become a major supplier for semiconductor focused chemicals. Last but not the least, the fifth company where I've personally invested in is Keynes Technology India Limited, which is a prominent player in integrated electronics manufacturing. It has ventured into semiconductor assembly and testing and high density interconnect PCBs by setting up a plant in Sanan, Gujarat with an investment outlay of 3307 crores to build a capacity of 2310 million units per year. So far, only around 300 crores is spent out of this massive budget and the company plans to invest another 600 to 700 crores in FY26 which shows a phased approach to capacity building and scaling operations. The company is already backed by a strong order book that has grown by 49% year on year from 5,422 crores in Q2 FY25 to 8,099 crores in Q2 FY26. It caters to diverse industries like automotive, industrial, aerospace, defense, nuclear, medical, railways and IoT and other segments. It has demonstrated over the years that it has really strong client retention with average relationships spanning 7 to 10 years among its top 10 customers. The current revenue of Keynes is only $0.36 billion and it aims to reach a revenue of $2 billion by 2030, which is quite a significant leap from the current revenue. If Keynes technology is able to achieve that, then it will definitely be a multi-bagger. From a financial standpoint, Keynes technology is seeing good growth in revenue and profitability and this momentum is poised to continue owing to the really high growth in the order book. The debt to equity is also quite low, thereby signifying strong financial discipline by the company. While one concern may be that trade receivables are increasing and short-term cash flow issues are there, but with the current level of operational efficiency, the company will scale its global operations well in the coming five to seven years. So there it is, following are the companies that are playing a major role in making India a trusted partner in the global semiconductor supply chain. While nearly all the major players are trading at very premium valuations, it might continue to be valued that way because the semiconductor industry is already the next mega trend that runs the entire world. The global dependence has turned semiconductors into a strategic geopolitical asset with nations racing to secure their own production capacities. For India, semiconductors represent more than just technology. They are the gateway to self-reliance, economic resilience, and entry into the elite league of tech-driven nations. Thank you so much for watching, like the video, Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for my next video.